All right, good morning. So it's about 7.30 now. Just got up and about to pack up and start moving. I'll show you where I camped. So I just cowboy camped right here. Still using the tarp as my pillow. And here's my sleeping pad as usual. And it, you know, it was kind of rocky ground here, but I slept really well. So I'm definitely fine with that sleeping pad. And there's a nice view here, not as sheltered as I normally camp, like normally I camp like, you know, more sheltered by trees and enclosed area, but this is quite an exposed location, so if it had been really windy, it would not have been a good place to camp, but it was fine, it was good. So I also managed to get phone service here, and I checked the weather forecast, and it's still forecasting a lot of rain for tomorrow and tonight, so I'm definitely not going to do any night hiking tonight. I'm going to hike until around sunset and make sure that I can find somewhere where I can pitch my tarp really well. I need to make sure that the tarp is pitched well because if it's pouring heavy rain, I want to make sure I stay dry, obviously. So yeah, that's not going to be great. Hopefully the rain's not too bad. Also need to make sure that I don't pitch in a place where like you can kind of get flooding because it seems like a lot of places in Arizona, it doesn't rain a lot. You know, most days it's obviously dry. And then when it does rain, it can really like flood through. So I just got to be cautious where I camp tonight, uh, which may mean that I don't go as far as I want to. We'll see. And also it means that tomorrow is going to be pretty rough. I'll probably be hiking all day in the rain. If it's too crazy, maybe I'll just sit under the tarp for a day. I don't know. See how it goes. I mean, I'm all right with the rain, but if it's like crazy, crazy rain and it's causing flooding on the trail and stuff, I don't know. Just see how it goes, I guess. So there is a bit of snow up here, so I am kind of wondering if it's going to be pouring rain tonight. Potentially if I camp high enough, it'll actually just be dumping snow instead of rain. Which I might prefer, you know. I've got to say, I'm a pretty big fan of these uh, banana chocolate chip Lara bars. I just picked them up recently and it kind of tastes like banana bread or something. I really like them.
the weather is very ominous today. It kind of feels like a sense of impending doom. Actually though, I mean, I've been in Arizona for almost three weeks now. Almost every single day is clear sunny skies, not a cloud in sight. And then, you know, I've had a couple days where it's been a bit cloudy. One day where it was kind of overcast for a bit, but you could still see patches of blue and, you know, it cleared up later. Today is just like, since I woke up, it's just been completely gray clouds covering the entire sky, which, you know, I'm used to in England or in Vancouver, but out here it feels like, I don't know, it feels wrong. And it's also quite cold today and really gusty. So when you get up onto the ridges or you are in certain locations, there are big gusts of wind and it's like actually seriously cold like if you were to stop up there i would definitely put my puffy jacket on uh because otherwise i'd, I'd be really cold actually anyway and that just makes me wonder what it's going to be like tomorrow because i think the forecast said it would be significantly colder tomorrow but then plus like if you're soaking wet there's a huge difference in your body temperature when you get soaking wet so if it's cold and wet, it could actually be like really cold. I don't know. We'll see. Especially at the higher elevations. Because I know that certain points tomorrow will be like above 6,000 feet elevation. And yeah, like I, it could be really cold. Anyway, have to see how things go. But I'm starting to think that, you know, in normal weather conditions, it would have been really easy to get to pine tomorrow. But I'm thinking that today I have to be really cautious about where I camp. So I'm not going to do any night hiking. And, you know, I might be setting up significantly before sunset even. Just so I can find a good spot. And so that means I'm probably going to have like 30 miles to do to get to Pine tomorrow. And there's no way I'm doing 30 miles in pouring rain. Especially if it's cold. So just got to like figure out what I'm doing. You know, maybe I'll just do like... A shorter day tomorrow try and avoid the heaviest part of the rain and then get to pine the following morning or something i don't know gotta sort of figure it out but i just want to play it safe and yeah so if you look at the bark on this tree you can see it's really burnt it's like charcoal basically so this is an area which has had some forest fires but this area doesn't seem like it's had, you know, a crazy bad forest fire where it's completely scorched out. It seems just partially burnt. But I've gone through other areas a little bit today and definitely yesterday. And just in the past week, like in the like superstition wilderness and that type of stuff, where there's been like really, really burnt out areas. And there could be more up ahead, I don't know. But those areas where like forest fires have really ripped through and just completely scorched the place are much more dangerous for flash flooding. So I've actually seen warnings on the maps in certain places, like earlier back, like in, uh, in the superstitions after I left Superior, I saw warnings saying, if there's rain in the forecast, delay your hike because the flash flooding is so dangerous in that area. Yeah, sorry, it got really windy there, so I stopped filming. But depending uh, where I am later today, I just don't want to be camping in an area which is like clearly been scorched by forest fire because it sounds like those areas are much more prone to flash flooding. I think just because so many of the trees have fallen, but I think, I don't actually know, but I assume because the soil is really scorched and it makes it, I, I don't know, I think the runoff is just way crazier. And I think it makes it more likely for, because there's all these dead trees which are all burnt out and then the soil is all scorched. So I think those trees are much more likely to fall, like when it's flooding. And so I might be wrong about that, but I'm kind of assuming that that's one of the reasons why it's so hazardous. So anyway, I just want to be cautious and make sure that I camp in a place where I'm not going to get, well, it's just not going to be dangerous, you know. So that's why I'm taking it more seriously than... You know, if I was hiking somewhere near Vancouver and BC and it was supposed to be really rainy, 
I'd be like, okay, whatever, you know, I set up my top, I'm fine. But I just, I don't know what it's like with the flash floods here, so I just want to play it safe. So this is what I mean about how these trees are like so ready to fall over. This tree is not really in the ground. Do you see what I mean? It's being held up by this little bit here, and then the rest of it is just hovering off the ground. I don't know how well you can see that. But this tree is ready to fall down. <laughs> So I just met another hiker, a guy called Ross, and he's the only person I've seen all day actually. It's crazy, it seems like every day this trail feels more and more remote. You know, I barely saw anyone yesterday, just said hi to a couple people that I passed by. But yeah, Ross is the only person I've seen all day today. And it's quite the difference from the beginning of the trail. It seems, yeah, like I said, every day it seems to be more remote. That will obviously change when we reach the Grand Canyon. The trail has become very rocky. It's pretty slow going. Looks like the rain is coming. The gusts are crazy. not look good. It's starting to rain now. Still have about two miles to get to where I want to camp. Yes, yeah, so I'm probably going to get soaked for these two miles. All right, so luckily this turned out to be a really good place to camp. I'll show you how I set up my tarp. So this is my tarp, and I use this stick here, and I use these trees, because I don't have a trekking pole, so I just set it up with whatever I can find. And it was actually really easy. Uh, there were lots of other spots where I could have done it, but yeah, uh, there you go. That's what it looks like. And it's nice and tight. It should easily keep me dry under there. Loads of space. I haven't set up my like, you know, sleeping bag and stuff, but as you can see under here, this is what it will be like underneath. So, should be good. And it's getting dark now, but yeah, about to set up my sleeping pad and all that.
All right, so this is what it looks like. I'm all set up. I'm in my sleeping bag now. And I'm on top of my like ground sheet. So I use that stick over there to set up the tarp and it's all nice and tightly pitched. I've got some of my wet stuff here, my rain jacket. And yeah, gonna eat some food now and I don't have my usual tarp as my pillow, so I'm just using my hat. But yeah, all set up. Get an idea of what it looks like. So I actually got really cold just hiking those two miles in the rain and getting soaked. My hands especially just got so cold and numb and frozen. So, you know, with the wind and the rain combined, it's actually pretty cold. But um, yeah, that made it a bit difficult to set up the tarp because my hands were so cold, but it was fine. And now I'm set up, I'm in my sleeping bag, I'm warming up a bit, gonna eat some food. And also that guy that I met earlier today, uh, Ross, I haven't seen him, so I'm assuming he probably set up somewhere else. He probably set up when it started raining and just pitched his tent somewhere. So yeah, hopefully he has a good night wherever he is, but I don't think he's coming here because it's pretty late now. But yeah, just gonna eat some food and get some sleep and kind of decide what I'm gonna do tomorrow morning. See you guys tomorrow.